When the late Leonard Bernstein was composing his famous contemporary mass, his rock, blues, and jazz mass, he said that he wanted it to be an honest mass. What he meant was that he wanted the words and music of this mass, this worship service, to ring true even to people who didn't see themselves as particularly religious or churchy. Well, as such, he knew that the most demanding moment in the Mass would not be credo, I believe. Most people out there in the culture at least believe vaguely in God. The most demanding moment would not be credo. It would be oremus, let us pray. Because to pray, to talk to God, we cannot hedge our bets about God. We have to move beyond vagueness and enter into a personal relationship with God. Sure enough, in Bernstein's Mass, when it comes time to pray, a chorus begins to intone a traditional prayer of confession. But then, a lone tenor voice soars up above the others to sing, If I could, I'd confess, good and loud, nice and slow, get this load off my chest. Yes, but how, Lord, I don't know. What I say, I don't feel. What I feel, I don't show. What I show isn't real. What is real? Lord, I don't know. No, 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 I don't know. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus told his disciples a parable because they were having problems with prayer. Now, Leonard Bernstein may have assumed that only contemporary and non-religious people would have problems with prayer, but Jesus knew better. We all have problems with prayer. Jesus' disciples even were having problems with prayer. That's why Jesus told them this parable. We have many questions and issues and problems about prayer. Mainly we wonder if prayer is really heard by God and so many of our prayers seem to be unanswered. We pray for health, but there's still a spot on the x-ray. We pray for peace, but the troops aren't home and the war rages. We pray for our children, but they still get into deep trouble. We have problems with prayer, but when we go all the way down, our deepest problem with prayer is that we lose heart. We, we just lose heart. We lose confidence and trust and hope that our prayers will be heard and answered. We lose heart. And Jesus told them a parable that they might pray always and not lose heart. The story that Jesus told his disciples was about an absolutely horrible judge. Uh, th this judge hated people and he hated God. Uh, he didn't go to church. He refused to give to the United Way. He's the kind of corrupt judge who makes a mockery out of the title, Your Honor. Unfortunately, appearing in his courtroom was a poor widow who needed justice, but who had nothing. She had absolutely nothing. She had no money, she had no husband, she had no standing, she had no power, she had no resources, she had nothing. She was so insignificant, she probably couldn't have gotten justice in a good courtroom with a good judge. But here she was in the courtroom of the worst judge in the land. Now, did I say she had nothing? Well, that, that's not quite accurate. She did have one thing. She had the capacity to be a pest, to annoy and when you only have one weapon, you use it. So she annoyed this judge constantly. She shouted aloud for justice in his courtroom. Give me justice, give me justice, give me justice. She knocked on his chamber doors, left messages on his answering machine. She probably even found him teeing off at the golf club, shouting, give me justice, give me justice, give me justice. Well, finally, she wore the old judge down. The judge said to himself, you know, I don't care about justice, I don't care about this widow, I don't like people, I don't like God, I don't care about anybody, but this woman is about to drive me crazy. I'm going to give her what she wants just to get her off my back. And that's the story that Jesus told us, that we might pray always and not lose heart. Now what are we supposed to get out of that story that will help us pray always and not lose heart? Well, some people say that maybe Jesus wants us to keep our eyes focused on the bad judge. He does tell the disciples, pay attention to what this unjust judge says. And if we pay attention to the judge, well, what do we see? What we see 
is that even though he was a horrible man, at the end of the day, he did give the woman the justice that she demanded and needed. So maybe what Jesus is teaching us is that even though the headlines in the newspaper often show a world of corruption and evil, this is, you know, God's world. This is a world ruled and overruled by a loving and just God. And at the end of the day, there is justice after all. Maybe that's what Jesus wants us to see. Well, I believe that, and I think that's part of it. But I don't think that's the heart of Jesus' story, because if that's all Jesus wanted us to see, the moral of the story would be, take heart, things are not as bad as they seem. But the moral of this story is, pray always, and do not lose heart. Okay, maybe Jesus wants us to focus our attention on the poor widow. Did you notice how she went after what she needed? It was, after all, her persistence, give me justice, give me justice, that managed to wrangle justice from the unjust judge. I heard a delightful story the other day about the day that Mother Teresa went to visit Edward Bennett Williams, a legendary Washington criminal lawyer. He was a powerful lawyer. He at one time owned the Washington Redskins and the Baltimore Orioles. He was the lawyer for Frank Sinatra and Richard Nixon, among others. Evan Thomas's biography of Williams tells the story about when Mother Teresa came to see Edward Bennett Williams because she was raising money for an AIDS hospice. Williams was in charge of a small charitable foundation that she hoped would help. Before she arrived for the appointment, Williams said to his partner, Paul Dietrich, you know, Paul, AIDS is not my favorite disease. Uh, I don't really want to make a contribution, but I've got this Catholic saint coming to see me, and I don't know what to do. Well, they agreed that they would be polite, hear her out, but then say no. Well, Mother Teresa arrived. She was a little sparrow sitting on the other side of the big mahogany lawyer's desk. She made her appeal for the hospice, and William said, we're touched by your appeal, but no. Mother Teresa said simply, let us pray. Williams looked at Dietrich, they bowed their heads, and after the prayer, Mother Teresa made the same pitch, word for word, for the hospice. Again, Williams politely said, no. Mother Teresa said, let us pray. Williams, exasperated, looked up at the ceiling, all right, all right, get me my checkbook. Maybe that's what Jesus wants. Pray like that, pray like Mother Teresa. Pray like the widow, cry out, bang on the doors of heaven with insistence. Well, that's part of it, to be sure, but that's not all of it. If that were the whole meaning of Jesus' story, then the moral of the story would be, be feisty, pray always. But the moral of this story is, pray always and don't lose heart. Now, Jesus' story is not finally about the bad judge, and it's not finally about the poor widow. It's finally a story about God and about you and me. This story says, if a poor widow with no standing can finally wrangle justice out of a judge without honor, how much more will you, God's very own child, the one formed by God in the womb, the one God, who God has loved from the very beginning, how much more will you find a God who will hear and answer prayer? There's a famous story about a young boy named Frank who was walking along the bank of the Mississippi River, and he noticed in the river another boy about his age wrestling with a homemade raft. He said to him, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to take this raft out to that island in the middle of the river. I dare you to go with me. Well, Frank couldn't resist the dare, so he scrambled down the bank and got on the raft. The two boys headed out to the middle of the river, but the current was swift and strong. And as they approached the island, the raft broke up and sank, and they had to swim to the island. And there they were, abandoned on an island, late in the afternoon. Nobody knew who, who where they were. What would they do? Right at that moment, one of those paddle wheel steamers started coming down the river, and Frank ran to the edge of the island, began screaming and waving his hands, help, help. The other boy said, don't waste your breath. They can't hear you, and even if they could, they wouldn't pay any attention to boys like us. But just at that moment, the paddle wheel steamer turned toward the island, 
And the boy said to Frank, how did you do that? And Frank said, well, there's something you don't know. The captain of that boat is my father. Well, the captain of the universe is our father. And how much more will one who has formed us in the womb respond to our every cry? So pray always and don't lose heart. Thank you.